at the heart of writing a good song is the ability to be in the service of that song, to be in the service of the music itself. And what that means is that you, to the best of your ability, try and get yourself out of the way. The products of the negative side of the ego are one of the things that get in the way of us being in the service of the music. So for example, we want to put things into a song because we made those things, because we invented something. And we fall in love with our ingenuity. We fall in love with the idea that we created something without really understanding whether our choices made the song better or worse. Now, of course, to be able to define what's better or worse, we need to define what we mean by our aim, what we mean by our goal, what are we actually trying to achieve. You need to define that. And for me, that aim primarily is to deliver a desired listening and perceptional experience to the listener. When I write a piece of music, I go through certain emotions and I go through certain experiences and feelings. I want to give those same emotions and experiences to the listener. Of course, the experience doesn't need to be exactly the same, holistically speaking, and it won't, but the core emotions, the core experiences that the music evokes, that's really what I'm trying to convey to the listener. Conveying that personal experience to the listener is how many artists create their own sound. That's how they create their own success. Now, as I talked about in a previous video, it's very easy to lose your perspective on your music because what often happens is that we lose ourselves in the endless cycle of just a pure personal experience. So you write the first version, it's great, it, it's exciting, but then it becomes boring and familiar. And then you start making changes that don't really serve that song, but instead they serve your creative thirst. And the more you focus on how interesting it is for you and how it's a mental masturbation of your ingenuity and your creative ingenious ideas, the more distance you're going to create between the original heart and soul of the song and the listener. So instead of focusing on steps and processes that would further improve that core essence of the music, you start making things that are exciting and stimulating specifically for you and specifically in ways that are based on the previous step. The change between that first experience and the second version. And essentially you're building on top of the original ideas. You're building on top of what already happened. And this process can happen, who knows how many times. It can happen twice, three times, five times, 10 times, 20 times. There's really no limit to that. And a way to detect whether you have done this is to listen to a track that you've maybe redone a few times. And, and more often than not, when you listen to the newest version, although it might have all kinds of interesting quirks and creative ideas and interesting techniques and approaches, it really doesn't speak to your heart and your soul. And the spark that was there when you first wrote it is really missing and now it's covered with all of this clutter. And the clutter might look great, it might seem impressive, but ultimately it has nothing to do with the core essence of the song. And to me that's a clear sign that I've gone too far, that I've distanced myself too much from the original heart and intent of the song. Now, of course, the first draft 
rarely is the final one. That rarely is the perfect version. So doing further work on your track is very, very likely. But what you want to make sure of is that you don't lose sight of that original core experience. So ideally the goal is to make sure that whatever revisions you do, whatever changes you make, whatever versions you create, that they're all in the service of that original vision instead of focusing on what's most creatively stimulating and interesting to you. Now, no matter how impressive the new revisions are and the new changes, whatever you've built on top of the original song, no matter how impressive they are, the problem with that is that the listener doesn't experience all those changes. They don't experience all of the revisions that you've done. So there's a great amount of distance between the listener and the original song. So let's say you've redone the song five times. You've always added new things in response to a previous idea. The listener is now missing five different steps. So although your creative ideas might be ingenious, they might be brilliant, if you don't show that process to the listener, they have no idea what you're talking about. They don't have a point of reference to what the original idea was. And therefore, they can't see how clever and creative and brilliant your revisional ideas are. And this eludes to something that is very, very important to songwriting or composition and arrangement and partially production. And that is that whatever changes you make in a song, you need to take the listener with you on that journey. So instead of creating revisions and revisions of that original song, you could bring that same concept into the songwriting in a way that doesn't mutilate or deform the original piece. Because the most effective songs take the listener on a journey and they build the song in such a way that it grows and develops in a very natural but intriguing way. So essentially your job is to bring that same exploration and that same adventurous journey, that journey of discovery to the listener. Now, it's not a crime to take yourself on a journey and build on top of previous ideas. I'm not saying you shouldn't have a personal experience with writing the music. You absolutely should, and you inevitably will have that. I'm saying you should share that journey with the listener. Narrative is everything. Storytelling is everything. But you can't just start the story at the end, at the final chapter from the final paragraph. You have to start from the beginning and you have to take the listener on that same journey. You can't just expose the final chapter. You can't just expose the final reveal because it's not going to mean anything without the point of origin. It's not going to mean anything without context. So don't exclude the listener from that process. Take them with you. Expose the same songwriting journey. Expose the same process of discovery as you went through, as you created it. Don't just show them the end of the story. Take them on that journey. Show them how you got there. And if you can do that, listening to your song is going to be one hell of an experience. Finished.